Welcome everyone. I know we have a holiday tomorrow, Veterans Day. Uh, it's usually observed on the 11th, or it is observed on the 11th, but since it's a Saturday, we all get Friday off. If you have Friday class, I don't have Friday classes, but uh, and a good opportunity to get out. I did want to say thank you for those of you who do come regularly. It's always good to see your faces here. It's always good to have your input. It makes hopefully the lectures a little bit more uh, connected. However, I also understand those who aren't here for whatever reason. Um, some days I get a lot more done if I just stay home and get through things. And again, it's about your learning. It's not about your being here to make me happy. It's about what you can learn. So and that's why I do the recordings. Uh, and it also allows you to go back. And even if you were here to see it the first time through, to kind of review and, and get it down. So no more exams until the final. And remember, the final is comprehensive. It will probably, I haven't given it for this class, but generally it will focus a little bit more on the new material that hasn't been tested. But it will go back and pick up some of the stuff from test one and test two. So that gives me the opportunity to see growth and, and then hopefully you're, you're getting, feeling some growth. Uh, today's topic is on verifying trig identities. It's not something that you would probably use in an engineering career directly, but what it does is it helps us as we move into the next few sections <coughs> that are useful for problem solving and, and doing things with. This is more a mathy thing. It's kind of just a, it's like a math puzzle, okay? It gets you working with these identities, which then will help you with solving equations with trig and all that kind of stuff. That, that does have some import uh, and some use directly. Uh, so verifying trig identities, what this is all about, let's see, let's, There we go. Is we're going to give you some idea. What what is an identity? If you got two things, so if you have two things and you're saying they're identical. What does that mean? They're the same. Very much the same. Exactly the same. Actually, not just similar, but the same. Good. And in math, we indicate that by the equal sign. Whenever you see an equal sign, it is telling you. The two sides are the same thing. Okay. Um, sometimes we get it where there's a place like there's an x value that makes them the same thing. But in this case, we want to think um, that when we have that equal sign, it's saying they really are the same thing. The other part we get out of this is that when we graph mathematically, if we graph both sides, what do we see? We see the same graph. So we're going to also be able to verify some of these by graphing it. And you say, yeah, they're the same graph. One graph's on top of the other. They're identities. They're exactly the same. Um, so there's some basic ones we're going to use, and then we use those to sort of prove that the other ones that they give us are identities. So um, <clears throat> here's the reciprocal identities. So we've got cosecant is 1 over sine. Secant is 1 over cosine. And cotangent is 1 over tangent. So that's one way we can think of them. So those are reciprocal identities. We won't prove those. We could. I guess we could graph them, but they're more they, we, they're a definition. That they, that's what these things are. There's also the quotient uh, trig function. So tangent could also be thought of as sine over cosine, and cotangent could be thought of as cosine over sine. So we also we define sort of tangent separately. What it is, right? It's the opposite over adjacent. We could think of it that way, but we'd also think of it as sine over cosine. And what you're going to see is one of the techniques we use to verify things is we turn all the trig functions into their equivalent sine and cosine form. So at least that's the way I do it. I don't know about other, it's not really, I don't really have a lot of fun with this. So to me, it's not like I spent, but I have colleagues that I've worked with that they love this stuff. I just sort of like it a little, but we'll turn everything to sine and cosine. We'll manipulate them until they look like the other side, 
and that's what we're doing today. So it's mostly manipulating things. Uh, there's a couple more. There's even and odd identities. So if we have the sine of negative x, that's the same thing as the negative sine of x. Um, so it means that these two are identical, whether you put the negative inside or the negative outside. Remember, the negative inside is a, re is a reflection. That's the x that's making the x. I think that's a reflection around the y-axis. If I get that right, and the negative on the outside is putting the negatives on the y, so it's a reflection about the x-axis. So if you reflect about the x-axis and you, or you reflect around the y-axis, you get the same curve. That's what that's saying. Uh, cosine is sort of a little different. Is the negative x actually gives you a reflection back to cosine x? So cosine x. So that's if you were flip it over the y-axis, you can't tell the difference because it's symmetric. It's an even function, is what that's saying. Sine is an odd function. Uh, tangent also is an odd function. So that's what those things, even in odd identities. And then we have the Pythagorean identities, which we will find useful. Anytime you see a 1 in some of these things, you're going to say, hey, maybe I could replace that with sine squared plus cosine squared. Um, these second two really come from just taking the first one and I'll show you, you don't have to necessarily memorize them, but if you take this first one, and if you divide all of these by cosine squared, And can we do that? We have an equation. We do the same thing to both sides. Yes, we can do. That's what's nice about math. You can almost do anything you want as long as you do it to both sides. right? And so what's this? Sine squared is actually tangent, right? This is tangent squared x. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared, that's 1. Same thing divided by itself. And then 1 over cosine, if we remember, that's going to be our, give us our secant squared x. And that's just this bottom one. The middle one comes from dividing by sine squared x. If you did that, you could see, oh, you'd get that one. So those last two I don't always try to memorize. I just remember sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. If I can remember that one, which I typically do. It's kind of like the Pythagorean, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And if we think it's, it is a triangle from the unit circle, the other two sort of follow. And I don't necessarily remember them, but I can create them. I, okay, let me divide it by cosine squared. That's what I get. Divided by sine squared, I can get it. Um, but I, I'll look for the final exam. We do give you formulas because we're going to be dealing a lot with formulas. I'll get that to you. It might, on the last test, did we have formulas? Yeah, it might be the same one. But I'll, I'll look ahead one way or another to find out what it is so that you can start using it while you do the homework. Because then you know, hey, I'm going to have these or I'm not going to have these. And so you, you kind of know which ones you have to remember, which ones you can use. But I think we give you these anyway, but we'll see. Um, so now we're right into the lesson and it's just going to be basically a few techniques. We've got four examples. We're going to work through them together. Verify means sort of to prove that these two things are equal. So I'm going to show you from the start one way we can prove that two things are equal. I think it's a good proof is graphically we can graph the left side and graph the right side. If the graphs are identical, then they're equal. That's always a good place to start. Uh, sometimes we give you a function of, like we give you one side and we ask you it's going to simplify to something. If you graph it first, a lot of times you might be able to recognize what, what it simplifies into. I think we do that a little bit further down in one of the lessons. But anyway, let me go ahead and uh, pull up the calculator. Sine, secant, cotangent. So what we do is we're going to graph. Let me get rid of this stuff. This stuff. This stuff. I say it? so it's a sine of x I forgot secant secant 
And again, we don't have a nice secant function here, but what is secant? Secant is one over cosine. So I'll put that in there as one divided by cosine x, parentheses, parentheses, and then it was times cotangent. Again, I don't have a cotangent, but I could put that in as one over tangent. Um, one divided by tangent x, that's my cotangent. So I put that in, and then what was the other side? Just one. And then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you, there's something called, uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, you can be in either radian or degrees for this, for what we're doing next, because it's going to graph them the same way. I, I would, I'm in radians, which probably is good um, for most of what we're going to do. There's also something called a zoom trig, and so that kind of fits the window for trig functions. It's a good one to use for these, so I, it kind of just gives a probably a good three. There's the first curve, and there's the second curve. Did you see that? It went so quick. One was blue and then the other was red. Are they right on top of each other? Yeah. Okay. They're... We graphically proved it. Okay, done. Let's move on. No, we'll show you how to do it analytically. But that's, that's the first proof. They are the same curve. Um, <clears throat> and where are we? There we go. Come back to this thing. Okay. So what we're... The process I use is I'm going to would take the more complicated side and try to make it look like the less complicated side. That's what they say. And yeah, so we're going to take and we're going to kind of manipulate the left side until we get it equal to one. And we'll see on the other ones we kind of do that too. And what I do mean by manipulate is I want to change everything to, into terms of sine or cosine, and then we'll see how things cancel out. So. Sine theta is already sine theta, so I, that, that one I don't have to do anything with. This middle, middle one is secant theta. What is secant theta? 1 over cosine. Cotangent, we could write as 1 over tangent, but again, I want sine and cosine. It's cosine over sine. Good. Cosine theta or x over sine theta. Uh, actually, I'm going to get away from the x. What I'm going to do is I'm just kind of working the, the left side. I'm not working this as an equation. I'm going to work the left side until I get it to be 1, right? <clears throat> and so sine theta, think of it as sine theta over 1. We just multiply the tops. So sine theta times cosine theta in the top. Cosine theta times sine theta in the bottom. Whoa, that's kind of cool. Because what happens to cosine divided by cosine? That's 1, right? What happens to sine divided by sine? That's 1. We're done. So we this is a verification because we used identities that are known, that are sort of defined, turning them into sine and cosine, simplifying, and we ended up with 1. And that's what we were looking to for. So we could put the check mark, we verified it. So that's what they mean by verify. You see, there's, these don't really make very good multiple choice type questions because <laughs> you have to just kind of go through it. And mostly what you want to think of, this is a practice to get you working with these identities for when we go to solve equations, which are in the next lessons. So this lesson by itself is not something, it's just really practice to get you ready for those next ones. Okay, and sometimes math is like that. Why are we doing this? You know, it's not necessary to solve a problem, but to build a skill that gets us there. Any of you guys seen the Karate Kid movie? I'm about the, he's about the same age. He's no longer, he's Karate Grandpa, right? So it's a long time ago. But I, I love that movie where he's, you know, he's going to learn karate and Mr. Miyagi just has him washing his car, waxing the car, wax on, wax off, painting the fence, doing all this stuff. He said, I came to learn karate and you're not teaching me anything. But he learned, he was learning skills that he was going to need. That's what we're doing today. We're painting the fence. Okay. This one, we've got two sides that are pretty complicated, so we could actually start with either one. So what we're going to do is do the same process, but we're going to try to get one to look like the other. Now, 
that's the idea so you start with one side until it looks like the other sometimes it's hard to know because right we're dealing with a unit circle type thing we're dealing with trig functions that repeat and sometimes we just go circles and we're not getting to where we want to go so what we do is we we cheat a little bit we start with the other side and, and we start working it and we meet in the middle and then we erase that stuff and it makes it look like we started and ended but sometimes we'll, we'll work them from both sides but the, the key is to go here so i've got a secant and a cosine a tangent and a sine uh, which side do you want to start with anybody have a preference which one left. left side okay might as well if we don't know just start with the left or so again what we're going to do is we're going to take everything on the left and turn it into either sine or cosine secant is one over cosine x cosines already cosine I'll put it over one though so I'm gonna indicate that I'm starting with the left side and I want to make it look like so I've got to get it to, so it's tangent times sine sometimes we just don't know where to go I mean we could graph these again and we would see that they they are one graph that might be helpful any suggestions what should I what should I do got them both in terms of sine and cosine we could do that but that's sort of like we'll, we'll save that for a, le, a last resort although you might not you might want to do it for a first resort because that might give you an idea uh, what do we have on this left side we've got a fraction minus something if we're going to like get common denominators so we can make them one thing because on the other side it's all multiplied and again yeah we could kind of cheat and do it but uh, we'll see how this is going to be helpful so we want cosine as our common denominator so this becomes cosine x cosine x we're getting a common denominator and so that becomes 1 over cosine minus cosine squared on top right that's cosine times cosine now we put the let me just inter, um, when we say cosine squared X when you go to graph this the way you're going to need to graph it is cosine X squared on the outside you don't actually do cosine squared and then the X on your calculator because your calculator won't know what that means so it's just a shorthand that we put the square on the cosine itself does that help okay so when you get there uh, divided by cosine now they have a common denominator and again we're trying to work just the left side uh, so we can we can actually subtract this so when we have a common denominator we put it over that common denominator and it's one minus cosine squared oh that seems familiar what is 1 minus cosine squared it's what it's an, it's an identity sort of but it's not the one that was given we were given this identity let me change colors uh, we were given sine squared X plus cosine squared X equals 1 what what they've done is it it's that identity but manipulated again so you also want to be able to re whenever you have cosine squared one minus cosine squared right we could subtract the cosine squared here it's another version of the Pythagorean identity one minus cosine squared X so we've got that and we look over here so this is we do it's not cheating but who cares if we cheat anyway but we see a sine square we see a sine over there so if we replace that with a sine squared X we're getting closer to what we want right because we need a sign all we had was cosines so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with sine squared over cosine and again we're looking okay there's but this is not sine squared X it's just sine 
all but tangent. Now I'm, I'm kind of stuck maybe, and I'll take your advice, Quinn. We're going to now just kind of, okay, let's, let's cheat a little bit. Let's turn this side to sines and cosines. So tangent is sine x over cosine x sine times sine. Oh, look at, if I break this sine squared into sine times sine, which I can do, right? I'm not really going to put equals, but uh, I could rewrite this. Let me bring it up here as sine x times sine x and I could put it over cosine x and then I, what's sine squared over cosine there's my tangent times sine x boom I'm done so notice how I, I to kind of figure out what I needed to do I, I did work with the little the right side to say okay Where's the step? How do I get there? Because we're using identities, but it's which ones do I use? Which ones, what pieces are going to need there? So we sort of do back and forth. And and then again, for the proof, we clean it up and we say, no, we didn't do that. We just went straight through. We knew what we were doing all along. But we get lost and that helps us. We come back a little bit. Does that help? Does that make sense? Sort of? Yes, sir. Yes, we could have started with the right side and done the same thing until we got equal to the left side. And sometimes one way will be easier than the other. It might be more direct. Uh, in fact, I think if we did that, it might. Because notice if we turn this, we could then turn this into sine squared. And it's over a cosine. We would have had to separate it into two fractions. And that might have been harder to do we would have had to do the other substitution. Um, either way, I think this is one, if I'm working it, I'm actually going to go from both ends until I get, oh, and then the middle is kind of, oh, that's easier to work with. I know what I need to do once I get to the middle. And then, so we could go either way, but I think we'd get, I would get stuck either way without working both sides. And that's what my, my teacher would always get on me, so I got good at erasing my cheats are putting that on another piece of paper and then making it look like I knew exactly what I was doing all along. But, you know, that's how it works. I had another teacher, they were fine with this, so they supported it. Uh, but it's just, it's again, it's, it's giving us, because this is in itself is not a big deal. You're not going to, there's no competitions for who can verify the trig functions the most eloquently or the fastest but they're just practice so that we can solve equations when we get to those next ones. So I think it's a great idea, work bo both of them. Here's another one. Now we, again, it's equal to one, so we see that's a very simple side. So this is, it's, it's natural to start with the left side and what we're trying to do is get it equal to one. Again, if we graph it, we'll see that they are equal. Um, and whenever we have something equal to one, what does that, put off in your mind, which identity are we probably going to be using? One of those Pythagorean ones, because sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So we're probably going to get there. And again, that's probably the direct one we're going to use, but we'll see. So again, first step, write everything in terms of sine and cosine. Uh, so secant is one over cosine, right? I'm going to use x instead of t's because my t's look like plus signs and I get confused. Um, and then this is over cosine x. Minus tangent is sine over cosine. And actually, just to make it so it's, you know, there's a, it's a fraction over a fraction, I'm going to write the denominator here, cosine of x, as cosine x over 1. So I, I've got two fra I got a fraction in the top, fraction in the bottom, and then we're going to divide fractions. It, it, to me, it makes it a little easier to line everything up. So we'll go with uh, tangent being sine x over cosine x divided by cotangent. Cotangent is the reverse, so that's cosine x 
over sine x. Okay, And then when you've got a complex fraction, you've got a fraction divided by a fraction, fraction over a fraction, we're going to rewrite it as a fraction divided by the fraction. So I'm going to say this is the numerator is 1 over cosine x. Um, and then when we multiply, so it's cosine over 1, but how do we multiply fractions? Or sorry, how do we divide fractions? We flip it and multiply, right? So if we have cosine over 1, doesn't that become 1 over cosine? But not theta. Let's stick with x. So notice this comes from, from taking the reciprocal of the denominator and multiplying. Is that OK? Anyone have questions? Because if you don't get that part, then nothing else makes sense. So that's how we always deal with them. We got a fraction over a fraction. We'll do it over here. So this is now minus um, sine x over cosine x. So that's the numerator. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is sine x over cosine x. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the, the first one becomes 1 over cosine squared x. This one, sine times sine, so we get sine squared over cosine squared x. We have a common denominator, which is kind of nice, right? So we can combine these fractions that are being subtracted. Uh, let me take it up here. So we get 1 minus sine squared. over cosine squared x. Remember, our goal is that we need to make it equal to 1. Fractions are equal to 1 whenever the numerator and denominator is the same. Um, what do you see that we could do here? What other substitution, what other identity can we invoke and bring in? Very good. So we could actually do either one, right? So we could either replace the numerator. We could say from the Pythagorean theorem, this is cosine squared, right? Sine squared. We just did this last time, plus cosine squared x equals 1. Subtract sine from both sides. You get that cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So we could replace the top with cosine squared x and over cosine squared x, which is equal to 1. Right? Same thing in the top as the bottom. You also could have replaced the bottom if you wanted. Maybe you would say, oh, cosine squared, that's 1 over sine squared. But we would have gotten, so we replace 1 minus sine squared. And in the numerator, we had 1 minus sine squared. And those cancel out. And those give us 1. So we could make either. Uh, I, we, could, we could use the identity either way. Okay. So that's, what the, that's what's nice about this is we have some control over which identities we apply. Yours might be different than your neighbors, but you could both be correct. That's always nice. Questions on that one? OK, good. Now, this one, let me get this out of the way. It's a little bit harder because we're just asked to rewrite it in terms of secant squared. Or sorry, give away the answer. In terms of secant. We don't know if it's going to be secant squared or two secant or three. We don't know what exactly it's going to be, but it's only going to be something with secant. But we remember what is secant. Secant is 1 over cosine. 
So we're going to do something with these and try to get it to be like 1 over cosine probably and then switch it over to cosecant. Okay. So we're starting off. And again, we could graph these. It might help a little bit. Um, there's one that we have in our other class that says in terms of sine or cosine. And so, you, you know, graphing helps, but it's not going to help too much here. So anyone have a suggestion? We've got 1 over 1 minus sine x plus 1 over 1 plus sine x. Bless you. So we got two fractions being added. How do we add fractions? Common denominators. Good. So this is, we're going to be invoking a lot of fraction uh, skills. And they, we might not be the best at fractions. Uh, I hear that like, like four out of three people are bad at fractions. Did you get that one? Four out of three. So there's only three people, but four of them. Okay. We're all bad at fractions. <laughs> okay. Uh, not as bad as that joke, but oh, okay. Here we go. So our common denominator is actually one minus sine x times one plus sine x, because those are they're already factored, so we, we need one of each. So uh, the one on the left, we're going to multiply it by the one on the right. So this is going to be 1 plus sine x that we multiply by. And we, to do that, whatever we do to the denominator, since we don't have an equal sign, we have to do the same thing to the numerator. Okay. So getting common denominators, we multiply the, bot, the denominator and the numerator by the same amount. Over here, we're going to multiply by 1 minus sine x. And notice the denominators now will be the same thing. So we multiply the top up here, 1 minus sine x. Okay. So in the numerator, we're just mul the, this here we're multiplying by 1. So we've got 1 plus sine x. We've got a plus sign here, so that comes there. This one is going to be 1 minus sine x. This may be kind of good. We see the sine x's are canceling out, right? we got a 2 there. Uh, what do we get in the denominator? Now, this is always the part. Um, well, let me just write it. 1 plus sine x. times 1 minus sine x. And sometimes it's hard to know what should we, should we foil that out or should we just leave it? Um, but since we're trying to get it in terms of secant, if we don't do anything with it, it's always going to be sine, right? So we kind of get to work at these. Um, so let's, let's try to simplify it as much as we can. Uh, so here we have a positive sine x and a negative sine x, so that becomes zero. We have a 1 plus 1. So in the numerator, we end up with 2. And then let's FOIL out the denominator and see if it, it helps us. So we get 1 times 1, right? 1 times 1 is 1. We get 1 times negative sine. So that's negative sine x. We get sine x times 1, positive sine x. So we get a plus sine x. Those are going to cancel. And then at the very end, we get a sine x times sine x, a positive times a negative. So that's a negative sine squared x. We OK with that so far? OK. So we just foiled out. Negative sine x cancels with sine x. That becomes 0. So I'm going to go up here. This leaves us with 2 in the top. 1 minus, right? There's the, yeah, 1 minus 
sine squared x. We're looking, we want secant. Secant is a cosine. Oh, can we turn that into some kind of a cosine thing? 1 minus sine x equals cosine x, right? That's a Pythagorean, that's that manipulated Pythagorean identity. Instead of redoing it, I'll just say here it is, right? So we did it here. So remember those Pythagorean identities. Uh, so, oops, I went the wrong way. Here we are. So I'm going to replace this with the identity cosine squared x. So I got 2 over cosine squared x. What else could I rewrite that as? I could also call that 2 secant, right? Because secant is 1 over cosine, um, which also means that 1 over cosine squared is, is secant. So I can just kind of jump through the hoops and rewrite this as 2 secant squared x. And that would be my answer. So I have rewritten it in terms of a secant. And again, why did I do it? Because they asked me to, and it's just kind of manipulate to, to try to get it into that form. Again, when we go down into the next sections, we're going to be solving uh, trigonometric equations, and we're going to need to manipulate them algebraically. Um, and so this is, a, this is really just a skill building getting some experience with manipulating sines and cosines and rewriting things. Questions on that one? Okay. That's it. That's all our examples. Take some practice, okay? But also, it's not so critical. And again, you may be coming up with right answers There's because there's multiple ways to do it. Uh, but sometimes that might not be what the Pearson is looking for. Again, they're looking for secant. We could have gone multiple different routes, um, but with this one, that's what we're looking for. So in the homework, again, it's just practice manipulating. Turn everything to sine, cosine. Do all this algebra stuff. Look, use up these other uh, identities, these basic identities for making new identities, improving, and again, also, sometimes just go ahead and graph it, and you'll see if they are equal, if they are identities, they will match. If they're not identities, they won't match. Okay. And then, let me go back. Uh, I will discard. We're done with this stuff. Um, so where are we going next? We are going to sum and difference formulas. So this is where... Um, we're actually going to be able to pick up some other special angles. So we do like the sine of uh, two angles being added together or subtracted. So sine, cosine, and tangent. We're going to focus on those. Uh, we do double angles. So that's two times the angle. And there's half angle formulas. Again, sometimes um, we've got an angle. We're building something and we want half. We want to bisect that angle. We can do that with trig. So that gives us some nice tools. Then we've got trigonometric equations. So these are equal to something we want to solve for the, either the angle or something. So again, we're going to be using these things. Uh, but these are where the applications are going to be actually helpful for us. And then we end the course with two, the law of sines and cosines, which again are ways to solve triangles. We use those either to get the length of a triangle side or an angle, whichever one. So with the information we're given. So. Um, we can solve things by triangulating. And again, these are very helpful techniques. That's how they're able to locate people with a cell phone. Uh, a cell phone, and you need at least two towers. That's called triangulation. They know how they're hitting, but there's a lot of things. When you're walking down the street, you're always triangulating because you've got ears on both sides. And as long as your hearing's good in both ears, which mine aren't always, you can tell where the sound is coming. You're triangulating. When you're you've got your depth perception, you're trying, you're, it's two eyes. If you had only one eye, you wouldn't have depth perception. My mom was pretty much blind in one eye, and she, so she never had her, we'd forget that she didn't really have very good depth perception because she only had one eye that was working. Um, and, and you don't get that, so if you've got two eyes working, but you're doing it all the time, you're, you're using triangles. You're using trig every day. Um, 
for depth perception, for hearing, to know where the sound came from. Uh, and, and we'll tie it all together. You'll be able to do that. That's kind of what the last section will bring us to. So we'll be using these, but you'll see the, the next few, we're going to be use, using these identities again and again, and that will give us practice, and they will kind of be second nature. By next time, I will find out for certain what are the formulas we will have on the final so that I can get that sheet to you so that as you're doing homework, you can have it and you know what you need to remember and what you don't, what's going to be given to you. Um, and we'll move forward with that. All right. Any questions, comments? What time is it? Who knows? 9.41. So I guess we got like half an hour. If you want to stick around and start working on homework, you're welcome to do that. If you got questions, we can do that. If you want to head out and get a coffee or lunch, do that. We'll, uh, we'll be good.